speaking of, you know, all the things that you have to do as a priest. So confessions and weddings, do you remember each and every first one that you've done? Um, yes. My first wedding was actually as a deacon. Um, uh, okay. cause you can do a weddings, you can do weddings for, that are not, they don't have a mass basically as a deacon. So when I was transitioning, okay. I did a wedding for a friend of mine who, uh, she had, uh, we'd been all service together since we were like seven or eight years old. Okay. So it's kind of cool to get to do her wedding. Um, so that was cool. Uh, yeah, I think pretty much everything I probably remember like the first one, you know, they kind of stack up pretty quick, but were there any things that you didn't do as a deacon that you did that you, you know, I mean that, that you could have done as a deacon, but then you didn't get around to doing it until you became a priest, like baptisms. Not and really. Like so I was, I did quite a few baptisms as a deacon, baptized my, my nephew as a deacon, which was cool. Um, but I think I was able to do most of my exercise, most of my diaconal faculties. Was there anything that you were really looking forward to doing as a priest? You know, obviously saying mass. I mean, mass. that's the source of and course. summit of it. But aside I, from I've that. always had a real passion for, for confessions. You know, I feel like that's so much of how, um, how we make saints, you know, is like through the sacrament of confession because it gives you a chance, obviously, to receive God's forgiveness, his healing, and then to evaluate your life and say, how, how can I do better in the future? You know, so I've experienced so much grace from that. Um, and our patron saint of a parish priest is St. John Vianney, and he's known for hearing tons of confessions. So it's like, hey, if I want to be a saint as a parish priest, hearing lots of confessions is probably a safe route. So yeah, I definitely have a, have a big heart for that. So that f- first day of confessions here at St. Faustino, was that your first conf- were those your first confessions or had you done some no, I'd during done that month? No, I've quite all? a few. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd been helping out. A few different parishes had events that they needed help with. So I, I tried to be available for that. Okay. So now that you're here at St. Faustini, the parochial vicar, what exactly does it entail? What What are the responsibilities of a parochial vicar? Yeah. Um, so really whatever the pastor really wants you to help with is going to be your focus. Obviously, what can I do that other people can't do? It's going to be sacraments. That's why the diocese signed, signed me here. So first responsibility certainly is going to be um, saying mass, um, hopefully preaching well. That's a big part of my time is preparation for preaching. That's important. I don't uh, preach for very long, but I prepare pretty, pretty long. Um, and you're doing that, you know, obviously on weekends, but multiple times during the week. Um, in fact, you're preaching at weddings and funerals consistently. So homily prep is a pretty constant thing. Um, and then outside of mass confessions, right? Like we were just saying, um, anointing. So half the week I take the emergency phone. And if we get a call for somebody who needs an anointing, either like immediately or they need it, you know, pretty soon, I, I help out with that. Um, Weddings, funerals, just had a funeral on Saturday, um, preparing for a couple of weddings right now. That's going to be the big stuff. But also um, meeting with people, you know, is, is a big part of it too. Whether people are just going through something, they need to talk to a priest. Mm-hmm. They want spiritual direction because they're trying to make a decision on something. Um, that's a, that's a big part of it too. And that I, t- I find that my time kind of fills up a lot with, with meetings. So, um, one-on-one. And then also you've got meetings, um, as, as a staff, you know, things as a parish, trying to make sure on the same page, either with the leadership team or the pastoral council or the stewardship council or the finance council or the liturgy council. Yeah, there's a lot of those things that come up too. Um, so, uh, that's kind of the main, we've added the holy hours in the afternoon, which is really beautiful, mm-hmm. helping out with those. Um, so it's the schedule. It's, it's very diverse, which I like. One thing about parish priesthood is I'm not just doing spiritual direction all day or just saying mass all day long. There's a lot of diversity in my schedule, but it does tend to fill up pretty fast. What has surprised you the most about priesthood? Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good question. What surprised me the most? Honestly, maybe just how much I just enjoy it. Like I, I thought I would find it very meaningful and it is. Uh-huh. Um, and I knew what, what I need to be doing but I also just really enjoyed it. It gels well with me. I, I like people. I like being with people. I like serving them. And I, I enjoy, you know, coming to the office and saying hi to, to Liz, the receptionist. And I enjoy answering my emails and answering the phone and hearing confessions and saying mass. Like it gels very well with my spirit, you know? And, um, I, I find that it's a very, it's like so meaningful. Like that's, what's incredible about priesthood is it's just so meaningful. It's not always easy. Um, cause it's, it's not always easy. It's not always fun, although it is fun a lot, but it's always meaningful. What's the most difficult part of being a priest that you've discovered? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I, I maybe would answer that question from two perspectives. 
it was like everyday difficulties, you know, just okay. kind of like working with the stuff. And for me, a lot of that is like just kind of mundane tasks, you know, things you got to take care of, things you got to do, all logistical things. You know, I'm more of a um, a creative kind of type. I want to like tackle things in different angles. And part of, you know, priesthood is is like even paperwork, you know, for a wedding, you got to take care of the marriage license and things like that. Mundane maybe stuff is mm-hmm. kind of hard. Um, on a deeper level, I mean, I think long-term like obedience and long, and, and like celibacy are going to be the big, and there's, there's a, there's a, there's a reason you took those promises. If they were easy, you wouldn't have promised to do it the rest of your mm. life. It would have just been like natural. Um, you know, to do whatever is asked of you, um, is going to be difficult long-term. So far it's been real easy. I love, I, they told me to go to St. Faustina. I love St. Faustina. It's easy, <laughs> but, uh, long-term there could be some moments where that's really difficult and certainly celibacy. You know, I think again, I, I, I'm, I'm young and it's exciting, you know, but there would definitely be moments where it's like, wow, I'm not having a wife and family. That's going to be hard moments. Gonna, it's going to be lonely and difficult. So you still struggle with that. Um, it's, I don't think it was about ever like not struggling with it anymore. I just wanted to make sure it was what God wanted. Okay. You know? And it's, it's not like struggling with actually being celibate. It's again, yes. you know, the continual, um, the continual recognition that like, okay, I am giving my life entirely for the people. This is not about me. This is about union with Christ on the cross, you know? And that's so life giving. Um, I think there's, there's so much about that that makes life worth living. You know, celibacy isn't about loving less. It's about loving more. In a lot of ways. Now you were this generation's type of priest where, you know, you it's YouTube, social media. A lot of people know you for for being really into new technology and all that, being on social media and all of that. What do you think makes this batch of how the priests of this generation are going to be very different from priests in the past? Um, well, you know, the Holy Spirit's always uh always responding to the needs of the times. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, hopefully that can be reflected, um, you know, obviously in the priesthood and how religious are living things out. Um, so God kind of gives, gives, hopefully gives you the priests you need for that time. And we have, we have, uh, unique, these are unique times that we're living in with unique challenges and the church needs to have a unique response to it. So, um, I think we're all trying to do the best, the best we can to take what, what we've gotten from the church, you know, historically, um, and to do the best we can to apply that now in the current situation. So uh, I'm excited to see, you know, just my, in my class, th- these are, these are good guys who are, who are priests and guys coming up in the seminary. These are solid guys, you know, so I'm really grateful to have that, you know, in the church right now and excited to see what they do. So you're, you're a quite a young priest. I mean, you're, you, when you were ordained, you're, pretty much younger than the normal ordination age, right? By a few years. Yeah. Yeah. Generally speak. I mean, 25 is the youngest you can be in terms of church law. And so I was 25, um, which used to be more common now. Like we talked about before, if a guy goes nine years in and comes straight out of high school, usually he's going to be 27. Um, so it just kind of depends. So you were right there on the, right there on the cutoff. Slid in. What, what challenges do you face being so young as a priest? You know, I don't think there's a lot of drawbacks to it. Um, I kind of thought, honestly, like I look young. I thought I would show up places and people would be like, yo, are you a real priest or whatever. But they mostly just see the collar and it's like, oh, hey, father. You know, it's like I'm actually mostly surprised by how not surprised people are. <laughs> or at least they don't show it on their faces. Maybe, <laughs> maybe internally they feel a little bit more. Um, but I've never had a situation where anyone I think was like... Yeah, dismissive or disrespectful or something because oh. I'm young. You know, in fact, I felt the opposite. It's pretty incredible. I show up at a parish with 10,000 people and I'm 25 and everybody's automatically calling me father. Uh-huh. You know, like father, father. You know, it's like wild. I was at the gym a few months ago and um, there was this guy there and he asked if I was using a machine. I was like, oh, no, I'm not. And he kind of looked at me funny and he was like, father. <laughs> and, and I, uh, I was like, son, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that, but, uh, I was thinking like somebody else watching that unfold, uh-huh. like I'm just in my gym clothes. Right. Yes. Um, was like this, this like middle-aged man just referred to this young 20 something guy, you know, as father, like that, what is going on here? <laughs> you know, it's like, um, it is pretty incredible. So, um, even though I'm really young, uh, I felt like, um, you know, it's been a huge gift. So you don't have gym clothes with a collar on it? I don't know. Some like, guys have that. I don't. Oh, really? They have those. Yeah, they have I, like that a, a black joke, shirt but... with a little with a little white mark on the top. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, you can get those. So, what is what are the rules for you? You know, wearing your your collar. Do you have to wear it all the time? Like, you know, you what is the 
Yeah, no, you don't have to. No one's checking up on us uh-huh. to make sure you are. Um, I, I want to wear it because it's what I am. You uh-huh. know, so many Catholics in the world are undercover. That's pretty much every lay person's undercover in some way, you know, which we need. Um, but it's good to have some people who are who are showing it publicly, okay. you know. So um, I pretty much wear it all the time unless I'm at the gym or, you know, just at home. Is there a rule that you can't wear it at the, you know, while you're doing certain things like jogging or what, you know? No, I think you totally could. It would just like, it would start to smell pretty bad after a while, (laughs) I think, you know, and it is black and it's Houston. So, um, but I think if if we show up at an event with the Cardinal, everybody wants to make sure they've got theirs on. That's really important. Outside of that, um, it's kind of up to you to hopefully want to do it. What's the dynamic like with, you know, you being such a young priest and then, let's say older priests or older parishioners. What, what is that like? I think it's, it's been very, nothing but positive, you know, for me. Um, I, I have so much respect for older, like Monsignor Borsky, right? The guy's been a priest for 50 something years and uh, it's just incredible. His faithfulness, you know, like he has seen so much good and bad Uh and he's stuck with this, you know, like that's just what I want, you know, to be able to be as faithful to the priesthood as he's been to it, you know, and all these, all these Catholics we see, you know, in the pews, these are people who have seen the church go through a lot of things, good mm-hmm. and bad. They've seen, they've seen all these aspects of life and this is where they are and this way they choose to be. So I know I have a lot to, a lot to prove still, you know, a lot to still accomplish. And I just hope I can, I can be guided well in that by these, these people who have proven it. Do, do you have people walking up to you or even just, even priests, like older priests, a, you know, do they give you advice? Do they give you tips or, or anything like that? Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, I ask for it, right? Like what uh-huh. advice would you have for a, uh-huh. for a young priest? You know, and I always appreciate that. A guy told me recently, like, hey, make sure you pray and make sure you stay humble and make sure you stay joyful. And I, I thought that was, that pretty much covers it, right? Stay close mm-hmm. to Jesus, stay humble and stay joyful. Is know? there any other bit of advice that you, that you really remember? Um, yeah, there was a priest in seminary. He told me, uh, make sure that you meet people where they're at, but then make sure you take them somewhere. Mm. You know, I think that's a pretty good model for a parish priest. Be with the people, be with them, talk to them, get to know them, but make sure you're taking them somewhere. Make sure you're taking them to Jesus and you're not just hanging out. Like that's not why, why we're called here is just to hang out with people, like hang out with them and then, and then take them to take them to the Lord. 